So what are the key characteristics of variables? Variables can be categorical in nature, they could be continuous in nature, or they could be discrete in nature. Let's look at each of these topics a little more in detail. Let's start by understanding what are continuous variables, or what is the continuous characteristic of a variable. Now, continuous variables are any variables that can take up to any value within a given range. That is, continuous variables are variables that can take on any value within a range, and they do not therefore have discrete jumps. Continuous variables are considered to be metric or quantitative variables, where the variable can have an infinite number or value between two given points. Now, to expand on that a little bit, a variable is continuous if it is theoretically possible for the members of the group to fall anywhere on a given spectrum with small amounts of a characteristic on one end and large amounts of a characteristic on the other end. Continuous variables are often therefore measured in infinitely small units. Let's look at an example. Reaction time, which is a very common um, behavioral measure accounted by numerous cognitive tasks in uh, psychology or cognitive sciences, is a very good example of a continuous variable because reaction times can take up any value. For example, participants here can have different reaction times. So the first participant has a reaction time of 400.342 milliseconds, whereas the reaction time for the other two participants are around 340.249 milliseconds or 140.323 milliseconds. And you can see that these values have taken up to any value within a given range. So thus, reaction times are really good examples of continuous uh, variables or the continuous nature of variables because they can take up any value. Let's now look at discrete variables. Discrete variables are any variables that can take only a certain value in a given range. Discrete variables are therefore countable in a finite amount of time. A good example of a discrete variable can be a Likert rating scale, which is very commonly used as a rating scale in psychology research that, for example, uses questionnaires in its data collection process. This is a discrete variable because your responses on a Likert scale can only take up to a certain discrete value over an interval. So if you're asked the question, do you like chocolate, you could either respond strongly agree, neither agree nor disagree, or strongly disagree. Or different participants can have different ratings. Participant A can say strongly agree, uh, B can say neither agree nor disagree, and C could just say strongly disagree or disagree, and so on and so forth. So because these responses on the Likert scale can only take up to a certain discrete value over the interval given here, we refer to Likert scale as a good example of discrete variables or the responses to the Likert scale as a discrete variable. Let's now move on to the next type, which is the categorical variables. Now, categorical variables are those variables in which we simply allocate participants to specific categories and therefore the name categorical variables. When dealing with categorical data, we have a finite number of variables that we might wish to investigate. Let's look at an example for categorical variable. A good example of categorical variable is gender, where we can have a specific category such as males versus females put into two simple categories as shown here or two groups in which one receives a certain type of an intervention while the other group does not. That is also a good example of a categorical variable. So in summary, variables can be continuous in nature, wherein they take up to any value within a given range. They could be categorical in nature, wherein they are simply allocated to specific categories, or they could be discrete in nature, wherein they take up only a certain value within a given range. 
Now, moving forward, let's try to understand how can we distinguish if the variables are continuous, discrete, or categorical. In order to elicit the difference between our variables as categorical, discrete, or continuous, we have to consider two key aspects. The first aspect pertains to the way we look at our variable or think about our variable. And the second aspect pertains to the way we measure our variable. Let's understand this a little better with an example. Now, a variable in theory may be continuous, but the way we measure it could be discrete. So, we could measure, for example, anxiety, which theoretically is a continuous variable using a questionnaire such as the State Trade Anxiety Inventory, which was proposed by Spielberg and colleagues in 1983. Here, the participants would receive a total score on the questionnaire, which gives an indication of the person's level of anxiety. Now, the total scores on this questionnaire can only increase in whole units, say from 38 to 39, or from 34 to 36, and so on. Thus, the way we measured anxiety in this case is discrete, whereas the underlying variable that we measure is assumed to be continuous. So this highlighted that the way we measured our data in this example essentially decided the characteristic of the variable of interest, which in this case was discrete in nature.